Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to sing with emotion, how to sing with feeling, and give you some ideas of different things that you can do on stage so the next time you perform, you don't just sound good, you look good too. And that's really gonna help take your overall singing performances to the next level. I've got five different techniques that you can try and one thing that you should never ever do. So make sure you stick around to watch the entire video so you can learn what that one thing is. My name is Karen Page and this is The Performing Voice. So when you start singing, of course you're focusing on your vocal technique like at the beginning because that's really the biggest hurdle that you want to overcome. So once you feel really comfortable with your technique and you got that down, now you can move on to how you actually look and what you're presenting and how you're performing. And that's really, really gonna take your singing to the next level, especially if you're filming videos for Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, and of course, if you're performing on traditional stages and nightclubs, things like that. So here are some different ways that you can tap into the song and sing with emotion. Number one, understand the mood of the song. So before you even get started trying to think of a way to perform the song that looks really interesting, figure out what the mood of the song is and then that will help you make the right choices for the way you hit the notes, for the way you gesture on stage, for the facial expressions that you make. So is the song sad? Is it happy? Does it start out sad and then get happy or vice versa? Is it um, like a social commentary song where you're trying to inspire people to make changes in the world? Or is it just a straight up party jam and the whole mood overall is let's have fun and let's feel good. So once you know what the mood is, then you can start to build on what emotions are really gonna work for your singing performance. Number two, understand the subtext of the song. Singing a song is a lot like acting in a play or a movie or something where you have to kind of break down what the script is and then when you know why the character is doing something, it helps you make better choices for what you're acting. Because singing is a lot like acting, right? So study your lyrics, study the song itself, and really understand what it's about. Who is singing the song? Is it you? Is it an imaginary character? Who are you singing to? Are you singing to the love of your life? Are you singing to your parents that you're angry at? Are you singing to the government? Are you singing to your best friend that you're trying to like hype up to go out to the club tonight and have a good time? Once you know that context, then you can really also start to like build and find which emotion is gonna be right for the song. Another thing that you can look at is, are there any metaphors in the song? Like maybe, the song's all about like a bridge and you're like, what is this bridge over troubled waters? I don't understand it. But when you start to study the lyrics, you realize that a bridge over troubled waters is really a metaphor for being somebody that supports you when you're having a rough time. So now when you're singing lyrics like, like a bridge over troubled water, you know what it means. And so that way you can draw up the appropriate emotions to express what it means to the audience. Number three, make intentional choices. So now that you know the right mood for the song, you kind of understand the different subtext of the song, it's time for you to make some choices. And that all ties into the way you hit the notes, the different gestures you make, how you express your face, like what kind of expressions you're giving, all of that. Let me give you some examples of what I mean. If you've ever heard Alicia Keys' song, If I Ain't Got You, it really takes you on an emotional journey. It starts out kind of thoughtful, and she's not really singing full voice. She's almost like singing her own thoughts out loud in a way. But then as the song builds and the dynamics build, her voice gets bigger, it gets louder, there's more emotion. And by the end of the song, 
she practically sounds like she's crying because she's so overwhelmed with this feeling of love, this mood of like sharing how much you love somebody with that person, like telling them how you feel, that it just really gets you. You can hear the emotion in her voice. So when I was studying this song to sing it um, for audiences, I did exactly that with my voice. I would kind of start a little bit small with the tone. And then as the song would grow, I would get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually, I got you with me, baby. It's okay to close your eyes, right? Because it's like you're holding back the tears. And it's nothing in this whole wide world don't mean a thing. Ah, crying, crying, crying. But not really crying but you can hear it right in there. So, okay, that was off the top of the dome, not gonna lie. Didn't do any vocal warm ups before I did that. But you know what I mean, right? Um, another example is Michael Jackson's song, She's Out of My Life. If you've ever seen him perform this live in clips, he would end the song literally down on one knee, head in his hands, like, <laughs> practically crying, right? Now that's a little dramatic and you don't always have to take it to that level, but don't be afraid to take it to that level, you know? Like, don't be afraid to be like, okay, at this point in the song, I'm gonna take a knee. Or at this point in the song, I'm gonna jump up and down because I'm so overcome with emotion, I can't stand still, right? Like, just go for it, but make a choice. and when you're looking at the song and thinking about, you know, okay, I have to sing the song for three and a half minutes or five minutes, I gotta pace myself, right? I can't come out the gate like straight up on 100. I gotta build to it. And building, building with the dynamic of the song really, really helps you to sing with emotion. Here's another example. It's really more of an example of understanding who you're singing to and those kind of choices. But it's a, it's a pretty famous story. It's about the song, I Will Always Love You. Whitney Houston made it famous and Dolly Parton wrote the song and she also recorded it too. Now when Whitney Houston sings the song, everybody associates it with a love story, right? Because it ties into that movie, The Bodyguard. So when we hear her sing the song, we're imagining that she's singing to Kevin Costner and it's all about like just this love story that didn't work out and they tried really hard, but you know, they got to part ways. But as she tells him, I will always love you. That's cool. That is a whole set of like really good choices that you can make if you're performing it that way. When Dolly Parton wrote the song though, she was actually writing it to the man who made her a star, to the man who helped her build her career to where she was super famous as a country singer. But she realized if she wanted to take her singing to the next level, she was gonna have to part ways with that business relationship. So if you listen to the song and you think about it with that story, all of a sudden it's like totally different. And the emotion behind it is different. The motivation behind it is really different. Cutting off ties with a business relationship is really different than cutting off ties with somebody you love. There's a lot of similarities, but just the subtle choices that you make when you're singing the song, maybe with your gestures and stuff, it's a little bit different. So focus on what kind of choices you wanna make. And that even can go back into, are you gonna smile during the song? Are you gonna close your eyes for part of it and be like, you know, just lost deep in thought? Are you going to wave your hands a lot because you're trying to get the energy all up and da 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 Like, don't just make choices out of nowhere. That's really the biggest takeaway from figuring out what kind of choices you're gonna use when you perform. Number four, use the right level of energy for the scene. Using the right level of energy for the scene where you're performing also ties back into the choices that you're gonna make, which we talked about in number three. What I mean by energy is 
let's talk about another sad song. I don't know why I keep using sad songs as examples, but it just works. Okay, so if the song is really sad, it doesn't mean that it has to be like super dramatic and over the top and you're whipping your head around when you're singing because you're so sad. <laughs> that could work if you're like in a really big theater or on a really big stage or you're in some kind of like arena or something. But it might not be necessary if you're just filming a video in your room and it's just you and the camera, right? If that's the case, you can bring it down. You can express the emotion in your eyes. You can express the emotion by tilting your head just a little bit to a certain angle. You can express the emotion by sighing, you know, by using your hands. It, it's just, it's not as wide, it's not as big. Right? So when you know kind of the size of the space, it will help you sing with emotion because the energy that you're bringing to the performance will match the overall scene. Number five, don't let your actual emotions ruin your vocal technique. Okay, now remember at the top of the video I said stick around for one thing that you should never ever do? Well, I lied, it's not at the very end, but it's almost at the end. Sometimes songs are written in a way that in, like draws up so much emotion in you in real life as the singer that it actually brings up a lot of real stuff. You know, like it makes you wanna cry, it makes you wanna scream, it makes you wanna rage, it makes you wanna like, maybe even laugh because it's goofy or something, you know? So every time you sing the lyric, you just bust into giggles or whatever. So when something like that happens, all your vocal technique just goes right out the window. Your breathing stops, you're not breathing from the diaphragm anymore. If you're about to cry, your throat's probably gonna tighten up and you're gonna feel really tense. You're not gonna have your voice resonating in the proper parts of your vocal like chambers like your mask and stuff like that right we do not want that you do not want to be so overcome with real emotion that you can't even carry on the performance right just like i talked about acting a little bit earlier in the video same thing applies when you're acting and you're playing you know acting out the script you can get really really overcome with emotions but not to the point where like you can't keep going the trick is to be in control of your emotions so that you make the choice of, okay, I'm gonna like get a little choked up here or I'm gonna be a little goofy here or whatever, whatever. Not that the emotions have the control over you. Like when I listen to Lady Gaga song, Joanne, honey, I cannot sing along with that song. Do you hear me? Because something about that melody and something about the story that the song is telling you, it's like, it just makes me wanna cry. It makes my heart break. And like to this day, I still can't sing along with that song because it's just so beautifully heart-wrenching, bittersweet, right? I'm gonna give you one more tip of something that you should do to help you sing with emotion and it ties into this thing. So number six, last but not least, of how you can sing with emotion is practice the song a lot. When you practice the song that you're singing a lot, like to the point where it's just second nature, all of a sudden any emotions that you're feeling that might prevent you from singing with good technique you'll be more in control of that, right? So just like I said earlier, I can't sing Lady Gaga's Joanne without crying. I bet if I sang that song 50 times, it wouldn't be as emotionally raw every time. You know what I mean? So last but not least, if you are trying to sing with emotion, but your emotions are getting the best of you and you kind of like, can't really give a good show because you're so just invested in it go back to the drawing board practice the song until you don't feel like 
your emotions are getting the best of you. And then you can actually put the emotion back in with more control and with more intention. And you can make good choices to be like, you're not gonna get me. You thought that you were gonna take me on this roller coaster of emotion, but I'm in control, right? So just that one little thing, practice the song a lot, can help you make the right kind of choices to sing with the emotion that you are comfortable and confident and in control of. All right, y'all, so those are my tips and suggestions for how you can sing with emotion, how to sing with feeling, so you're really connecting with the audience and giving them more of a show than just you singing here, and it sounds really good, but it's also really boring. So I hope you got something out of that. If you did, go ahead and drop yes in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video because I've got lots more for you if you want to know more about singing with confidence, how to take your stage performances to the next level, and all that good stuff. I've even got a free download for you. It's called The Singer's Guide to Superstar Confidence. The link is below in the show description and it's got 10 things that you can start doing today to improve your stage presence and get really good singing performances. So if you wanna go ahead and grab that, the link is down below. All right, y'all, thanks for watching. And remember, don't ever be afraid to share your voice with the world and sing the song that's in your heart because the world really does need a lot more magic and music and art and creativity right now. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.